to our performance. Uh, the cantata we're going to present tonight is one of the most unusual ones that I've ever been a part of and one of the most inspiring. I, I really hope that you're going to be touched by this message. Uh, I think most of it is absolutely self-explanatory, but the setting is a little motel, and uh, the characters are Hal and Nettie and Jack and Anna and Molly and Grover, and I think you're going to, uh, I think you're going to understand exactly what this composer and arranger was trying to portray when he composed for you Bethlehem Star. <coughs> All over the world tonight, people are waiting for Christmas. In high-rise apartments and small-town neighborhoods, children and parents, married people and singles, all of them waiting, hoping, all of them needing the love that Jesus comes to bring.
That's right. We're the owners and proprietors of this little beauty. The Star Motel and Diner at the Crossroads Exit. Your home away from home. That's how we advertise. We bought the motel when Hal retired from the military almost 15 years ago. 15 years ago come September. And we prayed that prayer every Christmas Eve since then. And you'd be amazed at the many different ways the Lord has answered that prayer. Never in the same way twice. One year we had a traveling salesman come by. He didn't even have an apartment to go home to. Just lived out of his van. And then there was that 14-year-old girl who was a runaway from home. And oh yeah, that divorce battle with two kids. Oh, and remember the Vietnamese family. They hardly with five children. They hardly spoke a word of English. Those precious children helped us decorate the tree, all of them giggling and whispering to each other in Vietnamese. Then Hal got down the manger scene, like he always does, and we used the little figures to tell them the Christmas story. <coughs> they all listened and watched and nodded, so serious like. But when Nettie told them that God had sent Jesus just for them, they all started saying, Jesus, Jesus, over and over again. I never quite understood how much they really understood. But like I said, last Christmas Eve, we were beginning to think nobody was going to show up. Every unit in the place was empty. By the time we opened up the restaurant, the snow was starting to come down pretty hard. It wasn't... There were a few uh, stragglers in for breakfast and some of the local crowd in for lunch, but... Still, no one had registered at the hotel. It wasn't until late in the afternoon that this family came into the dining room. A nice young couple, with a little girl named Molly. Come on, Molly. Let's Snow, just in time for Christmas. I can't believe it. Aren't we the luckiest? Mom, how much longer do we get to Grandpa's? Molly, your mother and I are tired of answering that question. It's okay, Jack. It won't be very much longer, honey. Nanny settled down to them down to their seats and began to take the order. The little girl kept chattering on about this and that. Is that your cat outside? It sure is. That's Elijah. He's quite a guy. My Grandpa's got two cats, Missy and Dolly Yellow Boy. A well, yellow boy weighs 11 pounds. He's almost as big as a tiger. Molly, what have your mother and I told you about exaggerating? I said almost. I'm afraid Molly is a big talker. Well, she's in good company. You have to be a world-class talker to get a word in edgewise <coughs> around Nettie and Minnie. Are you excited about Christmas, Molly? Oh, yes. I was in a Christmas play at school. Well, really, were you an angel or a shepherd? An angel, of course. There were lots of angels and lots of shepherds, too. But I got to stand in the middle and hold up the straw. I held it very steady. Molly, if you don't stop talking and eat, you're not going to finish your sandwich. Can I get you folks? They finished the rest of their meal in silence. And we're getting ready to go. Can I get you folks some more coffee? No thanks, we've got to be hitting the road again. We're trying to get to Tylerville in, by dark. How far is it, by an hour and a half? Oh, I'd say it's more like two and a half. And that's when the weather's cooperating. I tell you what, with all that snow, I'm a little concerned about you people getting out in, in the weather. We've got an empty hotel here, eight rooms. You can take your pick. No, we better get going. Aw, oh, Dad, I wish we could stay. Daddy's right, Molly. Grandpa will be looking for us. Grandpa, I saw you will be asleep on my bed in the guest room. Molly, get your coat on. Here, honey, let me wrap up the rest of your sandwich for you. Oh, and I've got some homemade cookies you could take with you in the car. Would you like that? They're my own recipe. Is it okay, Mom? Well, uh, sure. Thank you. That's so nice of you. Y'all be careful out there, dear. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye -bye, honey. <coughs> it's the funniest thing, Hal. I could have sworn that they were the ones. I just had the strongest feeling. Something about that young man. He seemed awfully tense. Well, I'd be tense too if I'd made it to Tyreville and all this snow. No, it was more than that. And he's pretty white too. He <coughs> had such sad eyes. Nettie, honestly, sometimes I think your intuition gets mixed up with your imagination. <laughs> oh, they seemed okay to me. Well, I could have sworn that they were the ones. 
You know, I'm beginning to wonder, with all this weather out there, we're going to see very many more people down this, this way. I'm not sure if we'll see very many more cars down this road. Uh, maybe the Lord wants us to take this Christmas Eve off. Now, Hal, I find that hard to believe. Why in the good world would the good Lord pass up an opportunity like this? The two of us just sitting here, dying to share our food and our faith and our friendship with someone who needs it this Christmas. There'll be somebody, you'll see. I'm going to turn the sign on early. That old faithful neon star is bound to lead our special person right into the front parking lot. It never fails. Maybe, maybe we should advertise. I will get the letters for the marquee. We can put it up there. Wanted, weary, lonely, otherwise miserable traveler. Good food, delightful company. Free lodging for one night. Apply within. <laughs> true till the end. He keeps calling our names and bringing our lives back to His. Bring him on in here, bro. 
got his family with him. That'd be all right. Well. Oh, heavens, it's you. I'm so sorry about your car. I'm just thankful that no one was hurt. I bet you didn't think you'd be seeing us again, but here we are. As a matter of fact, Molly, we did think we'd be seeing you again. At least I did. Wait a minute, what is this? How, how is it you folks know each other? We were in here just less than half an hour ago. I guess we should have taken your advice and stayed over. Well, it still holds. It sure does. You see, Hal and I have a holiday tradition of sharing our dinner with whoever shows up at the motel on Christmas Eve. And we'd be so honored if you'd be our special guest this year. Free lodging and food for one night. You can't beat a deal like that. Well, that's very nice of you, but... Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I hate to tell you, buddy, but I'm afraid at this point you don't have a whole lot of choice. I just received a bulletin authorizing me to close all county roads till the weather breaks. Besides, your car is in the ditch. This is exactly what I had in plan. Well, it's not exactly in anybody's plan, Jack. It's just something that happened. I'm just glad that nobody was hurt. We're so thankful for your hospitality, and it looks like we'd be glad to accept. Hooray, Hur right, can I play with the cat? Go help Daddy get the suitcases out of the car first, and then we'll see. Okay. I'll help you with the bag. And that's how the McNally family, Jack, Anna, and little Molly, came to your traditional guests at our Christmas Eve celebration. I looked over at Daddy. She gave me a little wink just to say, I told you so. And I'm going to know to be a little bit more respectful of her intuition in the future. long for us to get everyone dried off and feeling comfortable. Even Jack seemed to kind of settle down and relax a bit. Hal enlisted him to help carry in some firewood, while Molly was busy getting acquainted with Elijah the cat, and Ed and I went off to start dinner, talking and laughing like two old friends. You got an awful nice little girl in there, and I know you're awfully proud of her. Nettie and I just love children. Just never had any of our own. Well, family's a big responsibility, especially with the way the economy's been. These like things just start to level off and then the bottom falls out of here. What what lot of work are you in, Jack? Well, uh, I'm in sales. Pharmaceuticals. But actually I'm in nothing at all at the present time. Uh, I got laid off two weeks ago. So Christmas present time. Man, that's tough. What happened? Well, the national office you sent out a memo said they going to have to cut back the sales force. Two weeks notice, just like that. The worst thing about it is telling Anna. See, she's pregnant. We just found out, and I don't want her to have to worry, especially right now around Christmas time. Anyway, I sound like some kind of server I don't know what made me tell you all that. Yeah. He tries to act like there's nothing to worry about, but I can tell him how stressed out he is. He's not sleeping, he's up and down all night long, and he laughs at Molly for the slightest thing. If 
The worst part is the way he feels about the baby. At first he was so excited, but now I can tell it. It's just like another mouth to feed and inconvenient. I don't know what to do, Nettie. I'm so confused. If only you would talk to me. of her laughter but now I never even see her smile I used to hold her closer than my heart but now I can't seem to reach across the mile how did get so far apart how did the feeling slip out of our hearts is there a way to make love stay can we ever get back to the start how did we get By now we knew exactly why the Lord had put us with the Bengalis. If anyone needed his love and guidance, it was Jack and Anna. As we settled down by the fire together, I had this funny feeling that before the night was over, <coughs> the five of us were going to be good friends. And that's when Hal brought out what he calls his treasure box, the little brown box that holds our nativity scene. say it's one of my favorite stories. It's certainly not a new one, but it's one that I never seem to get tired of. It's a story that always never ceases to amaze me, but always gives me hope.
Plus, there was a young girl named Mary. She wasn't rich or famous or anything like that. Just an ordinary girl. from God came to her and told her that it was going to be a gift from the Holy Spirit. You know, I've often kind of wondered how Mary must have felt when she heard that news. Was she worried or afraid? Well, I think I would have been. But the Bible doesn't tell us what she felt. It only tells us what she said. What did she say? Well, she said, let it be unto me as you have spoken. And that meant yes. She said yes to God's plan for her life. Mary was engaged to be married to this young fellow here by the name of Joseph. I guess because I'm a man, I have a tendency to think on Joseph's side of things. You know, how he must have felt with Mary being pregnant. After all, he had just gotten used to the idea that he was going to have a new wife. 
And suddenly, there was a baby to consider. Must have been a pretty big burden with all that new responsibility. Not only that, though, the Bible says that Joseph was concerned about what other people would think with Mary being pregnant and not yet married. But an angel came to Joseph, too, and he said, Trust in God, that God would take away all his worries. And Joseph decided to do just that. So Joseph decided to say yes to God, too. Well, it was around that time that Mary and Joseph had to take a long trip to Bethlehem to pay their taxes. And neither one of them knew exactly what to expect. They only knew that they were depending on God, and God was in control. After a long, <coughs> dusty, uncomfortable trip, they finally made it to town. And you know what they found? What? No vacancies. Every room in the hotel room was full of until an old innkeeper said that he would find a place for them. Not a room, mind you, but a little bit of straw out in the stable. And during the night, a wonderful thing happened. A beautiful baby boy was born to Mary, a child promised by God to be the Savior of all the world. Mary and Joseph were very happy now. God had kept his promise, and they were holding that promise in their arms. How could we have ever wondered or worried or been afraid, Joseph thought? God had kept his promise. He had seen us through the journey's end, and he had been faithful.
What about the what about the angels, shepherds, and wise men? Well, I was getting to that. They're angels, you're right, lots of them. Bright, white, and filling the night with praises. They appeared out of nowhere to a group of shepherds on a hillside. These angels, these shepherds had never seen angels, much less a whole sky full. So they were pretty frightened. But the angels told them not to be frightened, not to waste time being afraid. There was something wonderful happening in Bethlehem. A Savior was being born, and they were invited to go see him. And so they went? That's right, they did. Now let's see, there's still somebody missing. I wonder who it could be. The wise men. Oh, yes, the wise men. I almost forgot. The wise men had to travel the farthest of anyone to get to Bethlehem. They had to leave their homes and venture out into a strange new land. It must have felt pretty scary, but it was worth it to them to get to see the Savior. And so they went. That's right, they went.
Now I've got angel shepherds, wise men, May and Joseph. That's everybody, isn't it? Not quite. Who else? Well, there's you and me and Nettie and your mom and dad. What do you mean? Well, you see, Molly, God is still looking for people to come and see, to come draw near and get to know his son Jesus. And Jesus is still looking for room to be born into people's lives. It's our choice now. We can choose to come to the manger like those that came back then. We can ask Jesus into our hearts as our friend and Savior. That way we can keep him right here as close as our own hearts, living our lives from the inside out. That sounds like something I could use about now. I want Jesus to live in my heart. I... Yeah, excuse me. Jack, wait. Jack, we have to talk. Jack, I love you. I've been so lonely. I don't know where you are. I feel like we've been a million miles apart. I know you've been worried about me, but... Me losing my job at all? No, it's not that at all. I know you'll get another job. I'm just worried about us. I don't know where you are, what you're thinking or what you're feeling, especially about the baby. I know this is the worst possible time for a baby. You're right, it's not the perfect time. But in there listening to Hal and Nettie's story, it struck me that there's never a perfect time for a baby to be born. You just make it through it, somehow. Somehow God helps us make it through. Doesn't seem like there's been much room in our lives for God lately, yet, does it? I mean, when I was a kid, I used to say my prayers at night, but I don't even think like that anymore. Maybe this is a good time for us to start thinking like that. You know, I'll tell you something. I think God was trying to tell me something tonight, something about the baby. I don't think I even realized until now how much I really do want it. And then hearing that story, the story I've heard just a million times before, it hit me that this baby, our baby, is a part of us. It's a miracle. It's a real little person, just like Molly. Oh, Jack. <laughs>
things going on at Christmas each year, but if you don't have Christ, you can't have Christmas. And our hope is tonight that you know the Christ of Christmas. What do you say God did to give his wonderful gift in a few thousand years ago just for you and just for me? What a great gift. We hope you know it. Again, this Sunday we'll be having services at 9.30. Sunday school and 11 o'clock worship. If you don't have a place to worship, come worship with us on Christmas Eve. We invite you to the fellowship uh, meeting after our prayer. And I just want to thank the choir for all the hard work they've done. And Bob and Dean expect to plan in Las Vegas to be with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Let's give them a hand. Be our closing prayer and our blessing of the food that you trust in.